In this video, I'm gonna show you how to program an Elgato Stream Deck with companion software and how to use it to control your PTZ Optics cameras. Hello, I'm Steven Ballast. Welcome to my channel where I explore worship technology solutions. This Elgato Stream Deck is one of those devices that's come out recently that you're starting to see pop up everywhere. I don't think Elgato knew the gold mine they had created. It was originally marketed to gamers to control their live stream while they're gaming but it's become an amazing tool for live production, especially when you pair it with the open source companion software that extends its ability to control all kinds of production equipment. I saw a post on a companion Facebook group that they were using a whole bunch of stream decks to control media playback for the NFL draft a few weeks ago. It's just a really cool, versatile tool. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can set it up to control your PTZ optics cameras. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you something that you can download from my website that's gonna make it even better and easier. I'm probably gonna have several videos about this Stream Deck because there are really a lot of cool things you can do with it. And of course, I'm gonna do a full video about this PTZ optics camera, how to set it up, configure it, and what I think some people struggle with with these cameras is how to get the best looking image out of it. So if you haven't already, be sure and subscribe to my channel so you can catch those videos coming up. But for now, I just wanna show you this really cool integration between the Stream Deck and PTZ Optics cameras. I've programmed the Stream Deck so that I can pretty much have complete control of the camera. There is a page of buttons on the Stream Deck where I can control the pan and tilt, zoom and focus, a page where I can adjust a lot of the camera's exposure controls, another page where I can store camera presets with one button push, I would use these pages when I'm setting up my show, storing the camera angles that I'm gonna use. And then finally, I have this page where I can recall the presets from three different cameras with the push of a button. This is the page I'd use during the actual program. So let's talk about how to set this up and how you program the Stream Deck. And then I'm gonna show you how you can download this entire configuration that I've made with all the icons and already completely programmed and load that right onto your Stream Deck. Let's go through step-by-step step how to set up and program your Stream Deck with companion software. First, you need to install the Stream Deck driver from the Elgato website. You'll find links to all of this down in the description of this video. But we're not gonna use their software to configure the Stream Deck. I'm gonna go and download a program called Companion. This is open source software that's been created to extend the functionality of the Stream Deck and it has a growing community that's creating modules that allow it to control a wide range of production equipment. So once Companion is installed, plug your Stream Deck into your computer by its USB cable and start Companion. Then I'm gonna click the Launch GUI button. This is where we'll configure what the buttons of the Stream Deck do. First, we need to create an instance. You create an instance for each device that you're gonna be controlling. So I'll click Buy Manufacturer, find PTZ Optics, and then click PTZ Optics Visca. Under label, I'll give it a name. I'll call it Camera 1, and then enter the IP address of my camera. The PTZ Optics cameras have an Ethernet port to connect to your network for IP control. And in a future video, I'll talk all about how to set that up. But for now, I'm just gonna enter the IP address of this camera, 192.168.5.203, and leave the port as default. Click Apply Changes, and now under Instances, I'll see my camera, and it will show the status with a green OK if I've configured everything successfully and it's communicating with the camera. Now that we have the camera instance set up, the next tab over is where we'll program the functionality of our buttons. Just click a button, and that opens up the programming page for that button. You can load a PNG graphic file for the image you want to display, or just make it a text button and set colors for the text and background. The key down action is where you program what will happen when the button is pressed. In the dropdown, we can see our camera instance and all of the commands available that we can use to control it. So for example, if I choose recall preset, then it will give me an option of what preset I want to recall. I'll choose preset one. Now on my stream deck, when I press that button, the camera will go to whatever is stored in preset one. So for the PTZ optics cameras, we can program pan, tilt, zoom, focus, exposure modes, iris, shutter, and saving and recalling presets, depending on what parameter is selected here for our button press. 
There is one thing that might not be completely intuitive when programming the PTZ Optics cameras, and that is if you program a button for movement, zoom, or focus, let's use pan up as an example. When you put that in the key down action and the button is pressed, the camera will keep moving until it gets a pan stop command. So what we need to do is put the pan stop command in the key up action. The key up action is what it will do when the key press is released. So now as long as we hold the button down, the camera will move. And when we release the button, it will send the key up action programming, which in this case is the pan stop command and the camera will stop moving. Now you can spend a lot of time programming all the functionality of your camera into these buttons. But the good news is I've already done it for you. You can download my configuration file from my website and import that into your installation of Companion and you'll have this all up and running without really having to do much programming at all. So let me show you how to do that. You still need to install the Elgato driver and Companion software just like I've already shown you. Then download the configuration file from my website and unzip it to your desktop. In Companion, over here on the far right, go to the Import Export tab. Click Import and select the file you just unzipped. Then click Replace Current Configuration and that will bring in all of my programming. Now this part is important. I found that at this point I have to restart Companion for the import to take effect. So close the browser window and click the close button in Companion. Then launch Companion again and all the programming should be there. Now go to your instance tab and what you need to do is click edit for each instance of the cameras and enter the actual IP address of your camera. And now you should be able to control your cameras with the buttons on the stream deck. Once you have things programmed using the browser interface, you can close that. Everything is stored in the Companion program. So you just need that running and your Stream Deck will work. Let me walk you through page by page and show you what I've programmed the buttons to do. On the first page are your camera preset recall buttons for three cameras. It should be pretty self-explanatory. The first row is camera one presets. The second row is camera two presets and so forth. The next page is storing presets. So adjust your camera to a position, press the store preset one button and that position and zoom have been stored in your camera. So now back on my playback page, if I press camera one preset one, the camera will recall that position. Page three is individual camera controls. The arrows should be pretty obvious. They move the camera. The plus and minus buttons zoom in and out. And this top left button will send the focus far command, which will move the focus out. The next button down, which is focus near, will move the focus closer. And the bottom button I call spot focus, it puts the camera in autofocus as long as I'm holding the button down. And then when I release the button, it will go back to manual focus. These buttons here on the top and bottom right are just quick ways to store preset one and store preset two for this camera while I'm on this page with my camera controls without having to go back to the other page to store them. Page four gives me exposure control for the camera. The four button modes across the top will change the exposure mode selecting between manual, auto, shutter priority, and iris priority. Then down below are buttons I can use to increase or decrease the shutter speed as well as two common shutter speeds I can recall. And then over here, I can control the iris up and down as well as jump to two iris settings. The next pages are just repeats of what you've already seen, but for camera two and three. You can tell what camera you're controlling by the number in the center button, which is a home position button, so it takes the camera back to its home position. When you're on the exposure page, the numbers across the top will tell you what camera you're controlling. Let me know in the comments if you use this programming for your stream deck. I'd love to hear if you're using it and what improvements you've made. If you haven't already, pick up a Stream Deck. You can find a link to that down in the description of this video. They are a really handy tool for live production. I'm gonna be making a video about using it to control OBS and a video server along with an ATEM switcher. So be sure and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, bye.